Our first quantity in rotational motion is the angular displacement. So we're not going to define it. Let's just point something out about it. It depends on the object, um, both on its shape and which direction it's pointing. But it depends on the object and the axis of rotation. Just like translational motion, you have to define an axis before you can really describe anything. So the same thing is true for rotational motion. So we're going to think about this with my favorite object in all of my courses. This is my Teflon rod. So if you've taken 102x, my electricity and magnetism course, which I highly recommend, uh, you know how much I love to play with the Teflon rod. So now we're going to use it to think about orientation and um, angular displacement. So first, we'll define an axis along the back. Right, so we're going to think about it rotating about an axis perpendicular to one face of the object. So I'll kind of try to draw it in 3D so you can see the axis. Axis kind of like this. And we'll start with the rod. Uh, we'll start with the rod down here like that. All right, so there's the rod right there. And we'll say for this, this is the rotation axis right here. And we'll say that this direction, in addition to defining the axis, you have to define the origin. So we're going to say flat is theta equals 0. Okay. Now we know that the, the rotation we want is, goes around the axis. Right? So if my finger is the axis, it's going to go up and down like that. So in the drawing, it's going to go higher like this. So we could change the uh, orientation and get it to go like that, say. And then say, what's its direction now? And you could say theta equals, it looks like, maybe 20 degrees. So that's a displacement. We went from one position, one angular position, to another angular position. But that 20 degrees describes this kind of a motion about this axis. We could define another axis. We could do an axis going straight through the middle and rotate like this. Right, so we can draw that real quick. Um, so if the axis is down, then we could draw it just, uh, just flat like this and call that 0. All right, so there's theta equals zero degrees. And then if we just turn it in and out of the page a little bit, I'll kind of tilt it so you can see it. It could go kind of like that, like that. And then this theta maybe is 20 degrees. Or we're just turning it around like that. So you can see in both cases, it moved 20 degrees, but it's completely different motions because it was around, those motions were around different axes. So picking the axis, most important thing. In some problems, it'll be chosen for you. In some problems, its natural free motion will define the axis. So don't worry about where to get it for now. So let's look at the uh, quantities we use. We talked about theta, which is the angular position. But that's not the displacement. Remember, displacement is always a change, right? So delta theta is theta final minus theta initial. So since our initial thetas here are both 0, the displacements are also both 20 degrees. Right? So delta theta here is 20 degrees, final minus initial. Delta theta here is 20 degrees, final minus initial. There's one more thing. The angular displacement is a vector. Oh, remember how the, the translational displacement, delta x, was always a vector, because it's in a direction along the x-axis. Angular coordinates are also vectors. The direction is the tricky part. We'll talk about how to get it in a minute. For now, I'm just going to tell you this direction is along the rotation axis. The direction is always along the rotation axis of the vector. So even though it's pointing away from the rotation axis, it's pointing perpendicular to the rotation axis. And the motion is in this perpendicular plane. The formal mathematical vector is actually along the axis in that case. Here, if we went from here to here, the delta theta vector, the angular displacement, is that way. The only question remaining is, what is the direction? So we'll get to that in the next one. And one more little thing. Remember, eventually, in translational uh, motion, we acknowledge that even the position was a vector, because the position is the displacement from the origin. Right? So technically, these are also vectors, because they are the displacement from the origin. So when you're here, 
the vector length is 0, right? But when you're at 20, technically that's a position displaced from 0, so it's the same as the, as the displacement in this case. So everything is always vectors, really. We'll look at that more next.